the title of this particular video series is called Creating the Quran, and, and this may come as a surprise to some people as to what do we mean by the phrase creating the Quran. Now, that's our position, to be honest, that the Quran is a product of man, and that's why I don't believe that it's an inspired book, but regardless of that, this particular video series is inspired actually by a brand new book that has been published recently, and it is by an author by the name Stephen uh, Shoemaker, and this is the uh, book right here. And as you can see, the title of his book is Creating the Quran, and we want to honor really that title because we are going to address the contents for the most part of this book, uh, quotations from this book, uh, positions from this book, and so on and so forth. And as I stated, with me here in studio to go through this book and this particular series is our dear brother, Dr. J. Smith. Dr. J, as always, brother, thank you so much for joining me and thank you for this fabulous idea. Well, it kind of plopped into our laps. That's one reason why we're doing this. We, this is, just came out in August of 2022, so it's hot off the press. I have just received my copy uh, a few, uh, one or two weeks ago. So what we're going to be introducing in these episodes comes from me having read through this, pulling into other material that I've from outside to support what he's saying. But this is why Shoemaker has done us a great favor. We've always said, haven't we, that much of what we're doing in this historical critique is putting together white papers. These are what-if scenarios. This is what is coming from different sources, from different people, from different places. But we really need to have some type of academic background. We need to have someone from academia who is actually well-known, uh, somebody who is well uh, written somebody who is a, a part of the academic establishment who is actually saying the same thing we're saying. Well, Shoemaker is just that person. And that's why I really want to encourage people, get this book. You've got to buy this book. It's not only does it support what we're saying, but it's answering the question that Al-Fadi just asked. And that is, how was the book, the Quran itself? Here's the Quran. It's a book. This is not a mem people do memorize it, but that is a book. It's been written down on paper. That means there's ink and paper put together. How did this get put together? Where did this come from? Now, Muslims will say it was memorized. That's true. We don't care about the memorization because you can't really uh, confront it. You can't really critique it. You can't really understand where the memorization came from, uh, obviously, because we're not there at that time. What you can ask, though, is where did this book come from? Because this is written down. And that's what he's doing in this. What he's doing, whether you are Muslim or whether you are a non-Muslim, you want to know how that book came into being, mm -hmm. creating true. that book. And also, I mean, Jay, to be honest, and, and I, I, I agree with you about, uh, you know, you can say I memorized the book and, and certainly um, it's, it's subjective to what does that mean to you that you memorize it. But we can always, I mean, at some point we'll probably address in this in our series that we can come back and look at the evidence that even the memorization failed in making perfect preservation. And that's the phrase that I wanted to mention. But anyway, uh, where do we go from here? Uh, at least, can you tell us a little bit more about, I mean, I'm, I've been reading, I'm reading it myself. Uh, Jay is reading it, but I, I want to honor my brother's work here. So give us a little background about the book, Jay. Okay, well, to be fair, let's just look at the, let's look at the cover. Already, Shoemaker is exposing his bias on the cover itself. I love what Shoemaker has done. Almost everything that he has written supports academically. He sources one thing about Shoemaker. He gives quote after quote after quote from all the scholars. So he's well read. He's pulling in all the major scholars. He's picking, bringing in the scholars from the Inada school. He's bringing in the revisionists. He's bringing the scholars who are against the revisionists. So he's taking both sides and he's answering one simple question. And that is how in the world did the Quran get created? Where did it actually come from? On the cover of the, of the book, you'll see, is a picture of Muhammad. That's Muhammad. It's a very famous picture. You know it's Muhammad because it has a, a fire around him, and his face has a veil over top of it. He cannot be pictured. This is a famous piece of art. So already, we're getting an inkling that Shoemaker believes it comes from this guy right here. Right. And I don't want to, of course, I want to uh, play the devil's advocate and I'm going to be pushing back. And I would say from his perspective, he did at least tell us that he believed the Quran is a product of humans, or at least he's going to address it from a humanistic historical critique standpoint. So 
obviously, it seemed like he is uh, in that school that Muhammad did exist and he is the author of the Quran. Oh, he yeah. says that all yeah. the way through, all the time. That is the only bone I have to pick with Shoemaker because we're going to show how hopeless a stance that is. Nonetheless, nonetheless, what is it that Shoemaker really wants to do? Well, Shoemaker wants to show that this book had to have been created at some point. But why don't we ask what the traditions tell us to begin with? Let's right. ask that. So right. he's going to do that. He's going to go through the traditions. These are what we call the standard Islamic narratives. Exactly. We've talked about it. We've given that name to it because that comes from what Yasser Qadi back in 2020, he was one that coined that phrase when he talked about the standard Islamic narrative or the standard narrative has holes in it. We've grabbed it. We've used it. So anytime you hear us using that standard Islamic narrative, we're talking about the Islamic traditions. And that includes the Sira, that includes the Tafsir, that includes the Tahrik, that includes the Hadith, the four genre of Islamic tradition. So he's going to actually pull out what they say, but he's going to pull out what they have been saying for, well, this is 9th, 10th, 11th, so this is 1,200 years, but no one's bothered to look and see what they're telling us. And when you look and see what they're telling us, actually it has nothing to do with that man. That's what I'm going to show, and that's what he is saying. Ironically, so who is it that he's saying that these traditions are pointing to? I'm going to hold off on that. I'm not going to give you the answer yet. Right. That's going to come up in future episodes. But also, uh, I mean, I want to give Shoemaker a, a credit for writing a book like this, going against the mainstream tide that is always, always in support, in general, I should say, in general, the mainstream tide of the academic field in support of the Islamic tradition. And in fact, he mentions that at the beginning that it seemed like if you go against that, it's always going to be problematic for you. And he did mention a couple of names of people who were instrumental in basically influencing the direction of a the field of academia. In fact, he talks about the founder of uh, McGill uh, University in Canada and how he himself became also a head of a department in Harvard, and therefore... The, Hold on a minute, you're now jumping the gun. But. I know, but well, we need to give people some background, and they, the, the fact that many of these people are becoming influential in the field. All I want to say is I give him credit to at least even saying that Muhammad is the author of the Quran, so what is he which is to against do? the Islamic tradition anyway. What does he really want to do? Let's just quote what he says. This is what he says. I have critically analyzed the process by which the Quran emerged from the scriptural surfeit of late antiquity, both canonical and non-canonical, to become the new canonical scripture of a new religion. That's exactly what this book is about. Really, that's an overview of what he has done. He is. This is a historical critical study exactly. of the Quran. It says it right on the cover. A exactly. historical critical study. You look at the back. What does it say on the back? Creating the Quran, that's the name of this book, presents the first systematic historical critical study of the Quran's origins, drawing on methods and perspectives commonly used to study other scripture traditions. What is he talking about? He's talking about the Bible. Basically, uh, you have to go back to the Bible. The Bible is the one that gave us the standard uh, foundation of how you do a historical critical study. It didn't invent it but it matured source criticism, form criticism, it matured critical analysis, textual criticism, all these higher and lower criticism that we now use for lots of other store, uh, books, he is now going to apply to the Quran. Taking it from the biblical studies and bringing it into Islamic, in its Islamic yeah. milieu. And I think maybe you're going to address this later, but uh, if, if my understanding is correct, because I'm, I'm not through the book in general, I just started at the beginning, it seemed like he's implying that the Quran could be classified as an apocryphal uh, work that borrowed from the scripture, which is the Bible, and then uh, reinvented itself. Uh, you're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. I don't want to jump the gun. I want to hold people's, wet their appetite because you will see what he finally, his final conclusion. And it's the conclusion I agree with. I just don't agree with one part of it. Other than that, everything that he puts, I just sat there and salivated because there's so many good quotes. There's so much research. There's so much good, uh, I, I, academic research, not just any kind of research that he right, puts into right. this book. That's why I want everybody to buy this book. Absolutely. Get it. I Please mean, get this it. book is an amazing, amazing book. And uh, I think we, I, I personally have been waiting for something like this for a long time. And I uh, give Shoemaker credit for his courage, 
to come out and write on something like this, even though he's taken a very academic approach, he's very respectful, so I don't wanna make it sound like somehow he is making any negative attacks, but you can read between the lines. I mean, uh, he is very open about the fact that he is challenging some of these uh, traditional views, but at the same time, he's presenting his findings by quotations. And that's the beauty about this book. There is tons of quotations, as Jay mentioned. And uh, by the way, this series is going to be intentionally very short episodes because we want to whet your appetite. We want you to uh, follow along with us one point at a time. So today, we gave you just an overview about the book. Next time, we are going to talk about uh, additional issue related to that introductory part of this book. Anything else you want to add to this yeah. before In we wrap it up? In the next episode, we're going to go right in and say, where is the problem? Why did he have to write this book? Exactly. Everybody, thank you again for joining us uh, into this brand new series that we have titled In Basically Honor of This New Book, Creating the Quran. Until next time, this is Al-Fadi, over and out. God bless. Mm -hmm.